Hi, welcome along to this Kaplan Masterclass. It's the one you've all been waiting for. It's how to use your calculator properly and make sure those settings are set up so that your calculator is ready to use and doesn't do anything weird or show any strange displays in your exam. My name's Andrew Mower. I'm a tutor at Kaplan in London. Um, I get a lot of my students saying, um, my, yeah, my calculator is showing something weird or the display setting isn't the same as it should be. Um, so hopefully this video will help you just to get those settings sorted. Um, and I also have a few tips at the end of the video just to show you things that a lot of people don't know about the calculator, um, but find really useful when they're doing their calculations. So first of all, I just want to run through um, which calculator I'm, I'm showing you, um, then some common issues the ideal settings, and then, as I said, some useful tips at the end. So I'm going to be basing this video on my uh, trusty Casio calculator. Um, hopefully yours is similar or has a sort of similar layout. A lot of other brands are still laid out in the same way. A lot of scientific calculators are very similar. Don't know about you, but I've grown to be quite emotionally attached to my calculator. It's got me through a lot. All those exams, you've been through a lot with your calculator. So you do feel that, feel that bond. Um, so here you go. I'm sharing mine with you. Um, so yeah, my, my good trusty calculator, um, and hopefully you have that attachment with yours as well. Now let's have a look at some of the issues that people um, often have then. The first one is that answers are displaying as a fraction, um, which in itself isn't a problem, but if the question is saying state your answer to two decimal places or you need that to, to put into another working, uh, that can be a bit of a pain. Um, so some people's show as a fraction. Um, what you can do is press the little S to D button, which is just above that delete key, the orange delete key on your calculator. There's that S to D button, and that switches it. What it sometimes does then, it shows something like this, which looks like 0.8, doesn't it? You think, right, the answer is 0.8. You think, 8 divided by 9, 0.8, that doesn't sound quite right. And if you look just above that 8, there's a little dot, which means that that is a recurring decimal. So that's telling you it's actually 0.88888 recurring. Um, so to two decimal places, that's actually 0.89, um, which is obviously a, a slightly different answer. And to one decimal place, it's 0.9, isn't it? So it's something like that sometimes catches people out. They, they don't like that. It's, it's not all that useful in an exam to have a recurring decimal. Um, and the third issue that often happens is that it, it does this um, scientific mode. So rather than showing this as a, a decimal, um, it shows you something like five times 10 to the power of minus three, um, which again, isn't all that helpful. Um, so these settings I'm about to show you will fix those um, and make sure that everything is um, nice and just a normal decimal that you can then use in your answers. So to get the, um, the ideal settings, the first thing I do is just press mode to start with at the top there that I've circled uh, and then one so that the, you press mode and it'll open up the settings you can see there. Then if you press one, that just makes sure it's not in any sort of stat mode or anything strange. Um, so just in nice, normal calculator settings. If you then do shift uh, and then mode, so that it goes to the setup, it then shows this screen. Um, if you then press eight, uh, which is norm, and then it will say one or two. And if you press two, that then eliminates that um, scientific mode where it's doing the whole um, times 10 to the power of whatever. Um, so it gets rid of that. That fixes that problem. Finally, um, if you want to do it so it's not showing you fractions or recurring decimals, if you do shift mode again to get this screen and then press one, so that's that math mode, and then it will say again one or two. And if you press two, uh, that will then be, for me, the ideal setting. Um, so you can still use the fraction button, which I'll show you in a, in a minute, but um, it, all your answers will then just be displayed as normal decimals, uh, which you can use in your answers. Um, if you do want it to show um, fractions, I know some people still like that. If you do sh that, that last setting, shift plus mode plus one, and if you just press one at the end instead of two, uh, that will keep it as a fraction in your answers if you prefer that. So hopefully that gets you to the perfect setting um, on your calculator. That's how I'd set mine up. Um, I've got three tips now just to show you things on your calculator that you, you may not know. Um, firstly, the fraction button, um, just I've circled there, allows you to type in um, fractions as I've shown you on the screen, uh, which is great for some of these more complicated formulae like we, we teach in some subjects at Kaplan. It's a really nice function just to make sure that you can see everything in one go, allows you to do fairly complex um, calculations just in, in one go on your calculator, which is always nice. 
And there's then the percentage button. Now, if you press shift at the top left and then the left bracket that I've circled there is on my calculator. Again, maybe slightly different depending on the model you've got um, or which brand of calculator you use, but you can use the percentage button. And a lot of people don't do that. If you're typing in, if you want to do 50% of 200, like I've done there, a lot of people convert that to a decimal. So they'll say, right, 50%, that's 0.5. So I'll just type in 0.5 times 200, which obviously will still give you 100. Still the same answer, no problem. But it's when we get down into the, the more complicated percentages. So um, there's one I, I do that's 0.125%. Um, you have to use of something in, in one question we do. And turning 0.125% into a decimal is then a bit tricky. I think, right, how many noughts is that? And what a lot of students do is they put in 0.0125, which, which actually is 1.25%. So it's incorrect. Um, so rather than having that and rather than having to convert things into decimals and use your fingers to, how many, to count how many zeros you need and all that, just use the percentage button. Just type it in as a percentage like you need to in the question or whatever it is. Um, so I'm a big fan of that percentage button and it just works um, exactly the same as you'd expect in Excel or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd use that where possible. Um, the third one's a, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit more advanced. You may not have heard of this one. It's, it's this, you can store numbers in your calculator, um, which does work if you're doing um, a, a process or if there's something that's a bit more complicated, you need to um, save some numbers to use later. And I really like this. So in, in that, that middle um, screen there, I got the answer is 100. Um, if you then press shift at the top left, and then you might see, I've just, in the bottom circle there, I've got, uh, it says STO, um, it's RCL, and above that it says STO. So what that is, it's store. So you do shift and then store. And then you can choose one of those letters. Um, now, you might just, again, be able to see there in the, the bottom circle, there's a little red letter A, but there are all sorts of letters on your calculator, A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, you've then got X, Y, and M, um, all in these red letters that you can, you can see there. So if you do shift and then STO and then pick a letter, it will allocate the number that you've got on your screen um, to a letter. So I've just allocated that 100 to letter A. What you can then do, if you press alpha, which is um, also circled at the, the top of the, um, of the calculator there, right? in red letters, it says alpha. If you just press alpha A equals, it'll then say, there you go, it's 100. And you can use that letter. So I could do alpha A times five equals, and that'll tell me it's 500. Um, so you can... Um, you can bring back those letters. So if you've got a particularly complicated um, set of calculations going on, you could do one bit, save it as A, do the next bit, save it as B, do the next bit, save it as C. And then at the end, you might have to do, right, okay, I'm going to now going to do five times A plus three lots of B divided by C, and that'll give me my answer. Um, so quite a nice thing if you are doing the more complex calculations. Okay, um, I hope that's helped. So just a basic video on your calculator and getting those settings spot on. Um, good luck with your studies. Good luck with your calculator. Um, I hope everything goes well um, and take care.